Hello, my name's Platt. I'm a Las Vegas bartender that works in one of the major casinos on the Strip. And for most of y'all, that's kind of what you think of when you think Nevada. You might think Hoover Dam maybe. Um, if you're uh, from California or a little old school, you might think of the Reno, Tahoe area for their casinos. Um, of course, Area 51, that's, <laughs> some people think about aliens when they think about Nevada. Uh, even as a resident of Nevada, that's kind of what I interact with most of the time. But the reality is Nevada is a really big state and there's a lot out there. And uh, I've seen some of it, but I haven't seen all of it. Um, however, I have a lot of free time right now because of this uh, pandemic. Uh, the casinos aren't open, so I thought, what the heck, let's hit the road and let's go see this weird, wild, wonderful state, Nevada. Alright, so we're starting, we're hitting the road, and I quickly want to talk about the route we take because I think this talks a little bit about the state in itself. I am going to start off leaving from Las Vegas, and we're going to head a little northeast like we're heading to Utah, and then we're going to run pretty much parallel to the Utah border as we work our way north. We'll hit cities like Alamo, Caliente, Pioche, Ely, and uh, probably the uh, end of the first part of the trip probably end up in El uh, then we'll work our way east to west along uh, I-80 till we get to uh, the Reno Sparks area Carson City that's the state capital and then we'll come back down parallel to the California border now some of you may be asking what about central Nevada why don't you go through the middle well there really isn't much metal in uh, Nevada there is that uh, I-50 called the Lonesome, Lone, Loneliest Highway. If you've ever seen the movie Forrest Gump, it's where he, you know, he's running cross country and it's where he just decides to stop and, and turn back. That's where that was filmed. But there's nothing out there. Uh, there's nothing most places in Nevada, as you'll uh, learn throughout a little trip. And that is because uh, 85%, roughly 85% of the, the surface area, the land in Nevada, is in some form or fashion controlled by the government, whether it be national parks, wildlife areas, uh, the Nellis Air Force Base test range, Area 51, uh, what have you. Pretty much most Nevada is not for uh, the commoner to have access to. So there's really only so much you can go see and do and like I said, when you get out of the big cities, Reno and Vegas, there's just not much. But that's where the fun stuff is, and that's what we're going to look for. So uh, we're going to basically circumnavigate the state. And, and again, we're not going to go out in the middle, but they won't let us. So uh, that's our route. Let's go have some fun. That's the uh, cool thing about living out in Vegas. The minute you leave town, you're in the desert. So uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this the next uh, couple of days, but I just want to show you, once you leave town, you are out in nowhere land. All right, we're about maybe 40, 50 miles outside of Las Vegas North, and this is something called Coyote Springs. It was supposed to be a big-time golf course. I want to say Jack Nicholas designed golf course. It's going to be community, you have a couple of different courses, shopping, all that and this was built in the early 2000s, right before the Great Recession. And uh, if we kind of pan out, we see, uh, fortunately, things did not get finished. There is still a course out here, but as far as housing or any kind of retail, just kind of fell apart. But it's, it's crazy to think someone built something just so far out here. And that's, that's one of the great things about Nevada. There's a lot of weird stuff like this. All right, gang, we're making the first stop on the trip. We're about... 70 plus miles north of Vegas in a little city called Alamo. Um, you're pretty much looking at all of Alamo. A little, uh, little convenience store in the back. Thinking uh, the, the men and women uh, of the armed forces, they love America out here. Um, actually, this is just, we've just started to get into uh, kind of different uh, climate or different uh, geography. Starting to see a little uh, green just south of Alamo is actually a little wildlife preserve. There's uh, a little wetland. Uh, 
we'll probably in the next hour or so uh, go through. There's a big uh, Joshua tree forest coming up, but uh, we are definitely out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but it is the start of an adventure. So uh, let's see what else we can get into. Kids, we stopped in Caliente, Nevada. Uh, we're about, I'm gonna say about 130, 150 miles, somewhere in that range, north, northeast of Las Vegas. Um, we're gonna walk down main strip of this town. All the little shops are that way. Uh, right behind us is a little train depot, train track. So uh, let's check out the town. Shut down ones is like a pawn shop. They got all kinds of knickknacks. What do you got here? You can rent it. Oh, you got Hot Wheels in the back. You want to rent it for sale? Rent the shop. Or you can rent it. Deal or no deal. Oh <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to get for rent. If anybody wants a, uh, a shop in Caliente, Nevada, you got that number. Oh, VR549. <laughs> Sam Peters for uh, Congress. Look at, Says look he's look. a patriot, so we're all for it. Across the street, you got Carl's Burgers and Sandwiches across the street. Let's. Oh, yeah, we see it right there. But you know what? That's on the wrong side of the tracks. Yeah. I don't know if I want to go on that side of town. No, I'm just saying. That I'm sure they, they do. They do well. You want to catch me there after dark? Look at your moon. This is moonshine. Bye. What in the world? <laughs> half moonshine still have bicycle. Flat. Boy, if you are if you're looking for something to get me for Christmas. <laughs> At least the bird. You got a bird cage. And bird cage. That's great. Alright, and these small towns, if you want to know what's going yeah, on, the really little nice home that just became available up in PO, which is a good deal. Alright. Well we're heading that way. We're, it's we're, on the top it's on the top hill behind the gas station up in PO. Oh yeah. I know where you're talking about. Motel. What is the spare tire? Well, I used to own a motorcycle tire shop in Las Vegas. We did motorcycle tires, dirt bike, ATV tires. And he took over that when I came up here and I, was, I did mostly bicycle stuff. But I do use parts and things. And then inside is kind of a mishmash of local stuff. All right, we're outside the old fire station here at Caliente. And one of the locals are telling us, you see these hills in the back, I guess they do a motocross, off-road, ATV race, down that hill, and then they come you back out up, down you here. This hill. You yeah. go way back there. Yeah, let's, we're gonna see if we can get a little better picture of the hill. All right, you probably see it there over the uh, fire station. So they come blazing down that hill, come out around here, and I guess the big race is this weekend. So we won't be here for that, but uh, I know the town folks are fired. stopped in Pioche, Nevada. Pioche is in Lincoln County. Uh, a little bit of inf information for you, a little history. When Las Vegas was founded in 1905, it was actually part of Lincoln County. And Pioche is the county seat for Lincoln County. And so if you lived in Vegas at the time, and let's say you had to pay your taxes or go file a claim or whatever, you had to come all the way up here 
uh, 200 something miles from Vegas to Pioche to pay your taxes, what have you. And uh, this was back before the road, so it'd take two or three days on wagon to get up here, and it'd take two or three days to get back. So it was about a week round trip to do business. But uh, Pioche is a, a mining town back when they uh, found silver up here. It was a boom town. Now it's a pretty, pretty small town, but still has a lot of the older hotels. So we'll go check that out. Uh, across the street is, I believe, the Lincoln County Telephone. Uh, right behind me is the uh, Chamber of Commerce, in case you want to do business here. So uh, let's check out some of the other places around here. All right, so I'm uh, out here in front of the gym, the old gym uh, theater here in Pioch. Uh, funny enough, Pioch is actually an unincorporated town, even though it's the county seat. Uh, the city was founded roughly in 1864 when they struck silver out here. This theater, it, it might seem funny, like, well, why is a theater in a town that small? It's not even incorporated. But talking uh, to a woman in Caliente that I wish I'd take a video of, she explained that all these mining towns at one time had theaters, and they were quite successful up until about the mid-50s, early 60s. And part of the deal was how the federal government had changed taxation, some of the licensing rules on running a theater. And it kind of became to the point where running a single screen theater just did not function. And so the theaters have died in a lot of these small towns. Uh, some now have, you know, gone to turning them into restaurants or stuff like that. But there's still a few of them around that out, out in the West that still show movies. But uh, as you could probably tell by uh, the gym's appearance behind me, they have seen better days. But... Uh, yeah, well, here you get the opera now. Oh! A little further down, my boy Jimmy tells me we have uh, the Opry House. Oh, yeah. Next door is the Thompson Opera House behind us. Uh, this is kind of, we're kind of on the main drag here. There's three or four old hotels. One of them, uh, there's only three rooms, but each room has a different theme. <laughs> These, uh, these these old cities are just amazing on some of the random stuff that are in them. And that, again, that's part of the reason why I came out to see all this stuff. But we're going to dig around a little bit more here in Pioche. And then we're probably next, there's a state park about 10, 15 miles east of here that actually has some greenery, some uh, lakes, uh, rivers. So uh, we'll check that out in a little bit. State Park or Spring Valley, something like that. I think Spring Meadow State Park. Uh, nice little lake out here. Um, back behind me, you've got the valley. And back here, um, some little hills. I know they have some hiking trails and stuff like that. You can go out. Um, kind of leaving the desert, getting a little more uh, greener climate. Um, you can probably see Behind me, you get a few trees. We have the lake. There's a little creek. The river runs through here. Um, if you kind of want to get away from the hustle bustle, it's about two, two and a half hours or so from Vegas. Uh, this uh, good little story, this particular lake behind me freezes over in the winter. And each January, if the ice is thick enough, they drill holes in the ice and they do a golf tournament. You can stay at the campground. They have some cabins a little further down the road. You can play golf on the ice. I would advise uh, bring a little apple pie moonshine for that. Wanted to keep you a little bit warm, but uh, cool little park. We're getting ready to head back on the road and uh, get our way up to Ely. Uh, little 
south of Ely, and we see a big uh, wind farm. It looks like you know, at least 25, 30 of those windmills. Those are big suckers. Uh, clean energy, how about that? We're all for it. All right, kids, we're just pulling into Ely, and I see we have a dispensary ambulance. I guess uh, if you're in an emergency, you need pot in Ely, you know where to go. Uh, Ely is the county seat of White Pine County, so it's the largest city. Um, Ely is also on, uh, besides being on the 93, sorry about the bumpiness, these aren't the smoothest roads. Uh, besides being on 93, it's also on Highway 50, also known as the Lincoln Highway. Uh, the, the Lincoln Highway is also called out here the Lonesome Highway. If you've ever seen the movie Forrest Gump, it's where, in the scene where he's running, it's, it's the point where he stops running and decides to go back. Uh, that's a little west of here. We're not going out that way because it's just nowhere. But we're going to drive through Ely real quick, and we're going to check out. There's a couple spots we're going to look for and check out, so they might be a little surprised. But uh, welcome to Ely, Nevada. All right, gang, we're uh, making a little stop in Ely because they have a they have uh, something that you won't find a lot in Nevada ci cities, but it is unique to Nevada. That's legal brothels. Right behind me is the Big Four brothel. It actually started off or was originally built in the 1880s as a dance hall for the miners to party or whatever, but became a brothel in 1939. Now, something I've talked about on uh, some of my live stream stuff and a question I get as a Vegas bartender is about prostitution. What's the deal with legal prostitution and everything? In the state of Nevada, prostitution is legal at a legal brothel. Now, in Clark County, where Las Vegas is, and Warshaw County, where Reno is, prostitution's illegal there. In the big counties, they don't allow it. They allow it in the smaller counties, they allow them to have brothels. In Nevada right now, there's currently, I want to say in the low 20s, the numbers kind of fluctuated, but at one time they allowed up to 29 brothel licenses. But all these brothels are way out in the middle of nowhere. We are 300 plus miles north of Vegas. We're probably a few hours west of Salt Lake. And uh, there's two of these brothels here. This is the big four. This is one of the oldest in Nevada. And then back behind my shoulder here is uh, called the Stardust Ranch. Uh, the Stardust had some legal issues with the city. The city for a while was wanting to close it down. They didn't want two brothels, they just wanted one. But it was decided, well, this does bring people to town, generate some revenue. So uh, the mayor went over the uh, city council's head. This was back about 20 years ago and allowed it to stay open. So there's two legal brothels here in, here in Ely. Um, like I so said, this is ran by the state. It's regulated. The girls go through health code checks or whatever. It's a regular business. Um, it's just as much mom and pop grocery store or a restaurant here. But uh, as of right now, when we're doing this taping, it's late May 2020. The brothels are still closed. They're getting ready to open the casinos or whatever. But the brothels, I guess, have to wait for the next phase or two of reopening. Uh, probably wise in a time of a pandemic to keep a brothel closed. But I wanted to, you guys to, to see this. The, they do exist. They're real. Um, However, prostitution, like I said, is not legal in Vegas. So, now this is a little bit of interesting stop. Uh, time to get back on the road, though. We may uh, drive and hit another spot or two at Ely, but uh, our next stop will probably be Elko, uh, and that will probably be the end of the first day of the trip. kids were uh, wrapping up the first day. Uh, decided to pony up and go big time and get uh, some high-end accommodations. Here uh, we're, we're stopping at Elko 
We put on about 530, 540 miles on the car today. Uh, like I said, pretty much worked up the eastern side of the state from Las Vegas up to uh, Interstate 80. We hit uh, Interstate 80 at Wells and then uh, came over to Elko to hit uh, to get here for the end of the night. Um, like I said, hit a lot of the, the unique little cities, Alamo, Caliente, Pioch, Ely, um, Elko. Elko is the uh, county hub for Elko County. Um, we're just off the interstate a little bit. Um, luck out, there's a little diner here we're gonna hit. Um, cross street behind me is a little park. And uh, we'll kind of plan out tomorrow, but tomorrow we're just gonna work the north end of Nevada. I'm actually surprised, I took one or two photos, but when you get north of Ely, like you're going to Elko, you hit, I think they're part of the Ruby Mountains or whatever, but uh, so we're in late May and there's still snow on top of the mountains. Absolutely beautiful. Um, kind of reminds me of an old John Wayne movie, or if you've ever seen the movie The Electric Horseman, uh, you might remember where Robert Redford lets a horse out or whatever. Kind of reminds me of that terrain. Uh, very, uh, just classic Western terrain. So we're wrapping up for the day, but uh, we'll get back up early tomorrow. We'll see, maybe checks out some stuff in Elko, Hinda Wetamucca, and we'll eventually make our way to the Reno area and uh, stay the night in Carson City. So uh, time for me to get something to eat. All right, kids, we're starting day two of our little adventure. We spent the night in Elko. We're now going to Jim, Jimmy here, Jimmy Jam, uh, co-piloting this little adventure. All right, we're going to head uh, west along uh, Interstate 80. It's a major east-west uh, road from like Salt Lake City to uh, Utah or to uh, San Francisco. So we're going to take 80 east or west today from uh, Elko. We'll hit uh, Winnemucca. We'll hit Lovelock. We'll finally get into the Reno Sparks area and then kind of work our way down uh, south of there's Carson City the state capital there's also Virginia City uh, there's tons of old saloons um, a lot of the legal brothels are in that area too Jim, Jimmy's ready to uh, to use some of his coupons that he got uh, for a Christmas gift um, so uh, that's our little adventure day uh, temperature wise we're probably 15 to 20 degrees cooler than Vegas uh, this morning I'm waking up to 70 degrees it's absolutely beautiful here so uh, that's real nice so let's hit the road ready for takeoff all right gang uh, we're making our first stop of the day we're at the uh, Battle Mountain Nevada cookhouse museum Battle Mountain is is about 45 minutes or so west of Elko uh, Battle Mountain was originally this area was founded there's a lot of fur traders moving east to west through this area. Uh, eventually, uh, copper was found out here, and copper mines uh, kind of opened up the area, helped create the town Battle Mountain itself. Um, if you take the north south road off I 80, it takes you down to Austin, Nevada. Austin, Nevada is on that loneliest highway. It's the closest point, from what I gather, to where that scene of Forrest Gump was filmed, so you know that's uh you know kind of mentally picture austin uh supposedly that's another big mining town uh you need a little historical fact about battle mountain ulysses s grant former president uh, spoke uh spoke here in 1879 again this is when the area was uh was uh developing the, the mines were developed Again, Nevada. Nevada was about 10 years old at the time, but uh, <clears throat> a lot of Nevada was still, at the time, more up here for the mining and the cities. And this was a big stop between Salt Lake City and Reno, and eventually on to uh, to San Francisco. So this, at one point in time, this is the more traveled end of the states. to all the trail cooks back in the day you'd get your you know trails you'd have all your hand stuff and then you'd have the chuck wagon cooking up beans at the end of a tough day on the trail so I guess they have this little museum
museum here to celebrate all those uh, cooks that uh, had to fix some rawhide uh, baked beans for the boys on the trail. So uh, we're going to check the things out and then we're going to Kids, we pulled into Winnemucca, Nevada. We're just off the I-80. Decided to stop for a little lunch. Um, we're hitting a little joint called the Griddle. If you're uh, headed out on the road, I know it's more convenient for some people just to. Ah, uh, we'll stop at whatever chain restaurant, McDonald's, what have you. If you're going to go out on an adventure like this, hit the local joints, hit the mom and pops joints. Again, you can go to Denny's anywhere in America, but uh, there's only one griddle in Winnemucca. So support your local business, and uh, let's check out uh, the food. All right, kids, we're checking out this uh, griddle in. Or, yeah, the griddle in. <laughs> One little bit of advice, something I do uh, when I go go on the road, hit hit a new diner anywhere, I always try the Reuben. If they can make a good Reuben, they got my business. So we're uh, checking out the Reuben here. Got some uh, homemade fries, uh, orange on top. I guess I guess we're worried about my vitamin C intake. So let's give this Reuben a try. We'll be back. <laughs> Pretty solid. Bread's got a good toast to it. Uh, young lady was telling me they add a little horseradish to the Russian dressing, so it gives a little kick. He's uh, doing his vlog. Mm. So if you're in Winnemucca looking for a Reuben. All right, we're, uh, we're stopping off here in Lovelock, Nevada, right off the I-80. Lovelock is the county seat of Pershing County, and this is the only incorporated town in the entire county. That's how remote some of these places are. We're a little over 100 miles east of Reno. Uh, we're stopped in front of the Candy Company, Candy Beach Company. It's a little RV park. Uh, I guess it's stop in between. They're coming from Elko to Reno. We're somewhere in the middle-ish. A little background on the Love Lock. Uh, in 1866, a Welsh immigrant gentleman named George Love Lock came to this area and started farming. This was a major stop on uh, what's called the Humboldt Point Trail. Uh, the Humboldt River runs uh, east to west here along this highway. And this is just a trail uh, between Gaps and the Mountains for people coming from Salt Lake City out toward uh, Reno and then eventually San Francisco. Another one of these just weird, funky little towns we thought we'd stop and check out. Uh, behind us, they're selling little uh, little barns in case you need a barn, you know where to come. Um, and I guess this was a different, was something called the Lazy K Campground before uh, Candy Beach took over. Uh, so we're about another hour or so out from Reno. We'll probably stop at Sparks next. Sparks is uh, right before you get to Reno. Check out there. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's actually a few more, more of the brothels are that direction. So we might stop and hit a couple of those. But uh, Lovelock, Nevada pretty much a glorified wide spot in the road but uh, again definitely one of these funky little towns to check out while you're out in Nevada. Alright kids trouble live shooting. I'm out in the middle of the desert and I got people still coming up. Alright we'll give this a try again. Alright we're outside Sparks Nevada. Um, 
quick note about Sparks. Sparks is the sister city to Reno. A lot of people when uh, you come to, to the area, or you know, when you think about Reno, you think Reno, Lake Tahoe. If you going to Lake Tahoe, you generally find fly into Reno. Uh, but actually, Sparks is Reno's sister city. Uh, Tahoe is actually on the other side of the mountains, right on the California border. Sparks and Reno are together. Sparks is actually not a small town. There's 100,000 people there. Uh, but most people, it's a random spot in the bottom. About uh, the history of Sparks, Sparks was in about the same time Las Vegas was. Before it was known as Sparks, it was known as Harriman, named after the H. Harriman, the railroad magnate. He built a switchyard out here, a railroad switchyard. That's what kind of brought the city into existence, land and, and uh, industry and everything. Uh, the reason we pulled over here is you might not be able to see it, but behind us, up the hill a little bit, was uh, the Mustang Ranch, another brothel out here. Uh, things are still locked down at the time of this filming in May of uh, 2020. And uh, we're still occupied with the brothels, but again, a lot of them are up here. They're not in Vegas, they're not legal in Vegas. And just a chance to see some of these places, take some pictures, whatever. Uh, some, of, some of these brothels, especially the ones around here, are quite famous. And uh, we thought we'd check them out, but they're closed. So we're going to go ahead and head into Reno. harrowing drive over the pass from Reno to Virginia City. We pulled into Virginia City. Virginia City is a classic Old West mining town. And we're going to go check out the Bucket of Blood Saloon. The saloon itself was built, I believe, in 1876 after a fire destroyed much of this town. It was rebuilt. And it's the oldest continuous bar in Nevada. Still open today. I believe they got a band going here in a little bit. Uh, we'll take you down the old downtown. They still have a lot of the old original buildings. Uh, feels like a little bit of the old west, so let's check out Virginia City.
right, gang. Um, we've left Virginia City. What a great, fun little town. Real interesting. I need to spend more time there. Um, we are just stopping by. We're heading to Carson City, and we're checking out the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, the world-famous brothel out here. Um, it's closed like all the other brothels. Uh, if you've seen the HBO series Cat House Confessions, this was it. This was the place as part of the series owned by the world famous Dennis Hoff. Um, we're shooting uh, in May of 2020 because of the quarantine and everything. All these brothels are closed, but we thought we'd stop by, take a few photos of this branch. Uh, I have a unique story about this place, even though I've never been before. I did have a friend that got married here, and and it was part of the TV show. If you if you have Netflix stuff, you can go back and check that out. But uh, there was an actual wedding here, and a funny story on that is one of his groomsmen was Ron Jeremy, the porn star. Here in Nevada, besides getting a quick and quick wedding, is you can get quickly ordained as a minister and be able to do weddings. Uh, actually, I'm an ordained minister. I when I heard about them, I'm like, well, that, I got to do that. So I got ordained as a minister, so I can do weddings. In case you want a wedding out here in Nevada, contact me. But uh, anyway, this is the famous Bunny Ranch. We're not too far out of Carson City. That's where we're going to end up spending the night tonight. And then we're going to work our way uh, back to Vegas tomorrow. But uh, world famous Moonlight Bunny Ranch. All right, guys. It's uh, about 8, 9 in the morning. We're here in Carson City. It's where we stayed last night. Uh, Carson City is the capital of Nevada, named after the former Western pioneer Kit Carson. I don't think related to Johnny Carson anyway, uh, if you're curious about that. Um, Carson City's been the capital of Nevada since the state was founded in 1864. Uh, its origins, like a lot of the cities, uh, especially on the western side of the state, mining, uh, people coming, you know, this is kind of a layover for people going to California. Uh, we're just east of the Sierra Nevada, so this is probably a a good place for people to stop, kind of rest up before they try to conquer those mountains. Uh, I'll give you a little shot of the Sierras, the background. Uh, actually, if you were to go straight over the mountains, you would hit uh, Lake Tahoe, which I su suggest everybody go to. It's, it's one of the more beautiful spots uh, in this uh, great country of ours. Anyway, uh, like I said, Carson City state capital. Uh, we are going to go and hit the main drag, kind of take you through town, uh, we'll drive by the state capitol, what have you. Uh, this is where uh, business gets done in the uh, state of Nevada. Some people <laughs> might say more, more monkey business than anything else, but uh, I want to say I read there's like 55,000 people here in Carson City. It's the sixth largest city in Nevada. So... Uh, so like I said, kind of a hub of commerce and stuff, even though Reno and Sparks are just up the road. So uh, let's uh, check out Carson City. We have literally found a mom-and-pop joint across the street from the state capitol 
And I told you we support the mom and pop local business, so uh, let's see what they got in here. Well, as I like to say, I like to support local businesses. Unfortunately, the mom and pop joint was a little <laughs> overwhelmed today. Uh, so we're, uh, we'll are we grab something to eat uh, a little bit later. But right across from it is a place called the Fox Den Brew Pub. And it's right across from the state uh, assembly. So I'm sure these guys have seen uh, some shenanigans. I'll catch this real quick. Well, happy hour sign. All you can eat wings. Boy, we might have to come back for that. All right, we stopped here in uh, Fallon. It's off the I-50, the loneliest highway. It's actually where we hit the 95, takes us. It's the main north-south road going from the Reno Sparks area down to Vegas. So we're heading back Vegas way. Stopping in a little joint called Jerry's. Support local. We support local businesses here. Um, the, t the theme of the town, it says on the uh, sign entering town that this is the Oasis of Nevada. So very interested uh, to see how Oasis like Fallon is. But first we're going to hit Jerry's Restaurant and see what they got. <laughs> Alright, you guys know I love Rubens. That's how I uh, judge a restaurant. So let's see how the Reuben is at Jerry's Restaurant compared to uh, the Griddle. What is, the, what is the answer, Clap? They got the toast level on the bread just right. The uh, pastrami is a little tough. I'm going to say the griddle is a hit on this one, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it anyway. All right, we're a little north of Hawthorne, Nevada, and what you're looking at right now is Walker Lake. Now, from this point of view, it looks like a pretty pristine lake, uh, very flat calm water uh, we will venture over here a little bit it's a big lake a little backstory to it uh, this area was part of a larger lake that existed after the last ice age around the time of the last ice age and then when the glaciers receded kind of cleared this area out and Walker Lake was kind of what's left now unfortunately as pristine a lake as it is Walker Lake's kind of a tragic story in a roundabout way a little further up is the Walker River, and that's what feeds Walker Lake. Well, the head where the uh, river starts at is, is from a natural spring upriver, and it's on uh, a Native American reservation. Well, the, uh, the Native Americans, I believe it's the Paiute tribe that runs that reservation, have decided to get into farming, and they've started siphoning off some of the water for irrigation. So that's actually stopped the flow of fresh water into Walker Lake and what has happened is the lake has gone down and level after a while but also because of the lack of fresh water the water has gained an excess amount of minerals and all the fish have died in there there's no life in that lake anymore unfortunately and uh, to the point where they feel the water is not safe so no one you're not allowed to go out in a boat or kayak paddleboard you're not allowed to go swimming out in the lake and that's why you see no activity is because the water is salinated and this lake is unfortunately dying now you might be able to tell there is a little area where you can drive down by the shore but you see no boats or whatever. and at one time the shoreline was closer to up here than it was down there and they had boat ramps uh, you might see a little further down I believe there was like a lakeside restaurant this was kind of a tourist spot for people in the area. Not many lakes up here, and Walker Lake was the spot to go to, but starting about 30, 40 years ago, the lake started really rapidly dying, and unfortunately to this day, this current day, uh, the lake has not much use. Uh, the, the water can't be used for any municipal purposes, and like I said, people can't go out there. There's been several attempts to bring additional water in. Uh, I believe uh, former Senator Harry Reid tried to get a bill where they'd acquire water rights from other parts of this valley and try to bring some fresh water in, but they've been unsuccessful in saving the lake, which is a bummer because this is, like I said, a very scenic lake. The 95 that we've been driving on runs parallel to it, and it's just a great scenic view, but it's a, it's a bummer. Bummer thing to see, but uh, again, visually nice. Uh, we're about 20 miles out of Hawthorne, and that's going to be our next stop. 
All right, uh, we're in Hawthorne, Nevada. We just uh, left Walker Lake a bit, little bit. We are in front of the Hawthorne Ordnance Museum. Uh, Hawthorne, Nevada is home to the largest ammo, army ammo depot in the world. Uh, we might catch a few photos when we're heading out of town of uh, the depot. They, they've taken an old deserted lake bed and they buried the storage containers in mounds out in the ground. And so they have a little uh, ordnance museum here. The town itself is about 3,000, but uh, obviously the depot is a major employer here. Uh, but all along the street, they have different bomb shells. Down the street, there was a tank, uh, stuff like that. Uh, only imagine what it's like for the poor 19, 18, 19 year old kid that gets in the army and their first <laughs> station is in Hawthorne, Nevada. And the closest lake is a dead lake. You can't go fishing or swimming in, but uh, Hawthorne's a neat little town. Uh, of course, they got a VFW, everything like that. Uh, Across the street is uh, the USO and the convention center. Yes, uh, I guess they have conventions in Hawthorne. But uh, we'll drive around, snap a few photos, see what this uh, crazy little town's about. Right, gang we pulled into Tonopah Nevada Tonopah about two and a half three hours uh, north and west of Las Vegas classic old western mining town what have you it's the county seat for Nye County uh, we've actually pulled into a unique place the clown motel you can see the big clown over me you can see the uh, front desk the clown motel besides just being naturally creepy because of the clowns, it's for the creepiest hotel in America. And what makes it even creepier than a regular, just clown motel, is next door to it, kind of over my shoulder here, is the old Tonopah Cemetery. That's right, there's a cemetery next to the clown motel. So the creepiness level is eight, eight levels higher. Uh, let's take a look at the sign out front uh, one of the things they claim is that uh, they are biker friendly unique thing about the hotel is each door has its own different clown painted up different uh, I've driven through this town once before and they painted the hotel uh, they tell you let me get in the shot uh, bikers are welcome if you're a biker come through Tonopah but uh, each room is painted a different color and has a different color clown on it. So uh, if you love clowns or if you really hate clowns but like being scared, check out the Clown Motel in Tonopah. And uh, we're going to go ahead and check out the rest of Tonopah. We're outside of the Goldfield, Nevada. Uh, right now, today, it's just a small ghost town. There's only, I think, 300 people, maybe 400 people live in the town. But at one time, back about 115 years ago or something, back in uh, around 1906, they struck gold out here. A local uh, Native American had found gold, and word got out that there was a gold rush in Goldfield. And at one time, this was the second largest city in the state of Nevada, had a population of over 20,000. 
Um, at one time, I believe in 1907, they built a special amphitheater and had the lightweight boxing championship of the world out here, and they held 20,000 for the fight. Um, if you go on YouTube, I can't remember the fighters, but you can go and actually find footage of this fight from Goldfield, Nevada back in 1907. Uh, we're outside of town here. Uh, behind me is the town, Old Town Cemetery. And it's where a lot of the old miners got buried. And, and the cemetery's actually kind of split up. There's uh, two types of headstones. There's proper headstones that you'd see in a normal cemetery that uh, the local mayor, sheriff, uh, the people of the, uh, of the higher class, as, as some would say, uh, they got buried with a proper headstone. But the, the miners, the drifters that kind of came through, uh, they got buried with just a regular stone, and then they would paint on the information, you know, died in 1911, this, that, and the other. So uh, it's a really interesting cemetery. Uh, it's a great bit of history. We're going to walk around and see, check out some of these tombstones because they're really fascinating. All right, here's our first example. Here's a proper headstone of somebody that looks like has lived in town for a while because they didn't pass till 1982. Right next to it is the older headstone. And even though this is, a, again, a, a, someone who's passed within the last 30 plus years or so, you can see this gentleman was the Esmeralda County Commissioner at one time. And this is how the other gravestones are marked in this particular style. So let's keep walking around because I, I know there are some real interesting headstones here. All right, had to stop by this particular headstone because I find it absolutely fascinating. The gentleman's name was W.A. Marmaduke, died at age 80. You, you may or may not be able to tell on the headstone. The gentleman was born in 1848, died in 1928. He was a veteran of the Confederate Army, also fought in the Indian Wars. And the Spanish-American Wars, and ended up dying here in Goldfield, Nevada. Uh, you might see on top there someone's left a beer, and if you think about it, if you fought in all three of those wars, you probably earned a beer. But uh, I can only imagine the stories old W.A. had to tell us. Now, some of these uh, tombstones here, sorry about the wind, it's howling. Uh, some of these tombstones here actually also tell about their death. It seems like uh, Mr. Priest here was shot to death June 4th, 1908. Uh, I got a little marker here. Shootout near Oak Street and Grand Avenue was a mine pump man from Wisconsin. I'm sure somebody was trying to cheat him out of a card game. I, uh... Had, had to stop this particular gravestone. Uh, Katie Smith died February 21st, 1909. You might not see on the little plaque below, but after it uh, gave her information about day of death, however, it just says, it's over. And on the bottom it says, life became a burden, rest in peace. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of dark. Might not want to be it by that gravestone around uh, dark. All right, kids, we're entering, we're just outside of Goldfield, we're on the south side of the town, and we're entering something called the International Car Forest. Now what it is, and you may see some cars in the background, is somebody came out on this piece of land, and supposedly, technically, no one owns this land, no one knows who did this, but people have come out here and supposedly stuck cars, nose-dived them into the ground, and people who travel by, hippies, etc., will come in and just start spray painting these cars. And you could drive around this. Now, I've got a kind of lower clearance vehicle, but we can go over some of the hills. But I'd suggest a truck before you come out. But you come out here and drive around these cars, and you'll see people put bumper stickers, spray paint them. It's an absolute buzz. 
All right, you see it right here. Someone stuck a bus in the ground. I uh, I wonder how you could pull that off without without being noticed. That uh, that's probably something you know. You need some kind of piece of equipment that uh, you would think somebody would catch, but supposedly no one knew who stuck this in the ground. We have got uh, I think this is a Cadillac, an old Cadillac here to the right. Kind of. All kinds of bumper stickers and stuff, but this is absolutely wild. Uh, let's see what I've got. Uh, this looks like an old station wagon over here. People just posting random stuff. All right, we're uh, somewhere between Beatty, Nevada, and Las Vegas. We're about, I'm gonna say, 80 something miles outside of Vegas. Uh, we're still technically in. Nye County. Stopping by though, behind us is the uh, right, you might see the billboard. Behind us is the Area 51. There's a cafe, convenience store, jerky shop, what have you. Um, and uh, to some most importantly, the alien uh, brothel. Um, this is probably one of the closest brothels to Las Vegas, but since we've been stopping a couple, I saw this had to pull over. Uh, this was owned by uh, Dennis Hoff. This is one of his brothels that also uh, the Mustang Ranch, the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, whatever, all part of his uh, brothel empire, but uh, they sell all kinds of stuff out here. Now, this is not really that close. Well, it's kind of close to Area 51. Area 51 is so large, there's a couple of spots. Um, Earlier in the trip, we stopped by uh, something called E.T. Beef Jerky, and that's on the other side of this. There's a test range, Area 51, uh, where they used to detonate uh, nuclear bombs. And so we're on the west side of this now, that now, and we started off on the east side. So I thought we'd stop by, take a pic of that. Uh, we're close to home now, about to wrap up this trip, so uh, let's get on home. Oh, it's good to be back home in Las Vegas. The lights, the sounds, the action. Uh, the city just has a vibe to it. Uh, lots of energy. And that's what I love about Vegas. But uh, sometimes it can be a little much. Sometimes uh, you just need to get away. And I think uh, after this little trip, I realized that if uh, Vegas gets a little hectic, I can go back out and see this weird, wild, wonderful state, Nevada.